Good evening, good evening, good evening, folks. Welcome to another episode of Spilling Tea. I'm your host, Tiffany Daniels. We are going back to that horrible world known as the JRC, but before we do the usual disclaimers and a drink of tea, because holy crap, the allergies are kicking my butt. There we go. All right, so if you're unfamiliar with the Stop the Shocks campaign or the campaign against the troubled teen industry, you're going to find all the pertinent links right there in the description box. Please, in particular, take note of the article written by Neuroclastic, a small non-for-profit started by Autistics for Autistics. In it, they interviewed over 800 ABA professionals in regards to the JRC's so-called Behavior Modification Program. The Judge Rotenberg Educational Center doesn't want you to read that article so much. They threatened Neuroclastic with a defamation lawsuit. They did not remove it from the website. Neuroclastic refused. You know the drill. Please read the article. Share on all your social media. Also included in there is Neuroclastic's public statement regards to the defamation lawsuit threat, as well as a link to their GoFundMe. We are crowdfunding just in case the JRC ever actually does see through with their threat. Trigger warning one. When we discuss places like the Judge Rotenberg Educational Center or Agape Boarding School for Boys, you're going to hear vivid descriptions of and catch clips of surveillance footage of people with mental health issues and disabled people being tortured and abused. If you get got young children present, please use your headphones. Trigger warning two. This channel is marked not for kids for a reason. We use profanity on occasion and speak on dark subjects. If your child is 16 and younger and they are watching this, very obviously parental supervision is very much advised, all right? All right, so where we left off last time. As stated previously, other drugs may improve SIB or AB symptoms by treating the underlying disorder for which they are approved. And, excuse me, in other words, if you are a dual diagnoser like me, and if the matter of the fact is that it is actually treating something that is due to one of the other diagnoses, and that one of those diagnoses may be contributing to the self-injurious or aggressive behavior, very obviously using it to treat the underlying cause, which is the other diagnosis, is very obviously going to approve things on the autism side because the autism is getting triggered by the diagnosis. Again, it's the circle of suck and not the fun kind, all right? Thus, in considering the state-of-art treatment for SIB and AB, FDA also considered these treatments of underlying disorders. For example, children who are impulsive with aggressive outbursts may have moderate to severe ADHD. Okay, can I please put this out for the record because I'm getting really tired? of my fellow neurodivergent brethren who happen to be ADHD get constantly and never endlessly vilified. I'm so over it, I can't even see straight. But it's impulsive and it might be aggressive because if they have ADHD, Jesus Christ, Karen. When you have an aggressive outburst, and you neurotypicals have them, in fact, you tend to have them way more than I do. Do you immediately say, well, obviously it's because this, this, this ailment, without taking into context what's going on at the time? Of course you don't. I know it's contrary to your all's popular beliefs out there, medical model, but those who do have ADHD are goddamn human beings. Not every single impulsive move 
is always ADHD. Let's start out with that. Number two, and I can say this with some authority because I've worked in the damn field that they are actually more often than not less aggressive. Hear me on this, less aggressive than their neurotypical peers. In fact, I have many friends with ADHD. At no point in time by any of them or any of the consumers that I was a part of the treatment program and plan acting as a consultant and a resource, at any time had to deal with aggressive outbursts because severe or moderate ADHD. And before you tell me, well, you obviously only dealt with the moderate, let me bring you back to the fact that my section of the state covered 25%. 25%. That's millions of consumers. Okay? Literal millions. Yes, even in the early 2000s. All right? Still nothing. Okay? Quit this crap where you constantly blame autism or ADHD for everything. All right? It's beyond irritating. I am tired of watching them being constantly vilified and called every other word that they can come up with that sounds nice <clears throat> to get away with treating them like monsters and vilifying them. I'm over it. Over it. Okay? I'm tired that every time something goes wrong, autism gets blamed, and then ADHD gets blamed. It's old. Just saying. Let me give you a better example. When I have a PTSD flashback, that my flashbacks are special. It's the type of PTSD that by cellular memory, when I have a particularly bad flashback, my skin will replicate whatever bruise, uh, whatever piece of skin that that flashback was bringing to the forefront of my mind. Those flashbacks overwhelm me entirely. It overrides the more analytical and logical side. What happens when an autistic gets overwhelmed, kids? That would have been a better comparison, FDA. I'm going to need you all to stop vilifying autistics and ADHD people in particular and quit vilifying people with disabilities overall. The hell is wrong with you all. FDA approved medications can treat symptoms of ADHD, including impulsivity, and therefore may also reduce associated SIB or AB symptoms. I have seen situations where it might lead to self-injurious behavior, but the number between the two of them the ADHD person is a hell of a lot more likely to harm themselves than they are to harm other people. That has been my experience across the board, but let's continue. The FDA-approved medications for ADHD include stimulant and non-stimulant medications. Stimulants include amphetamine and methophendate drugs. You see, this is why you all are playing Russian roulette right now when it comes to the Adderall, because a lot of folks with ADHD literally need it to function. Literally need it to function. Okay? Just saying is all. Common adverse reaction of the stimulant include decreased appetite, 
trouble falling asleep, irritability, headaches, and stomach aches. I was literally listed as all of the above, folks. All of the above. Decreased appetite, check. Trouble falling asleep the entirety of my life. Irritability, oh my God. I'm usually irritable on a good day, mainly because masking for as long as I do every single day is exhausting on every single human level. But when I was on Ritalin and when I was on Adderall later on, Holy crap. To give you a comparison, imagine yourself on your worst day of your time of the month. That level of PMS and mood swings. Yeah. Hi, how you doing? Essentially, you are PMSing 24-7. Okay, there's a reason I'm no longer on that drug. And the stomach aches, holy crap. I had to call mom from school so many times as a kid when I was on Ritalin. It wasn't even funny. Eventually, her work just set aside a room for my ass for when mom had to come and pick me up because the pain was too much. I would still choose it over the GED device. Reduction in growth rate, sadness, irritability, tics, abuse, dependence, and elevation of blood pressures and heart rate can also occur. Yeah, that's what happens when you're on a methamphetamine. I'd still choose it over being shocked just below the lethal limit. Ritalin may kill you. Being shocked at just below the lethal limit when you have tachycardia will kill you. Just saying. Sun death, stroke, and microcardial infraction have been reported in otherwise healthy adults and youth with heart problems taking stimulants. Yeah, see, this is why disclosing all your medical history to the doctors who's prescribing you medicine is so damn important. They're not psychic. They're not going to know if you have heart issues. They're getting ready to prescribe you a methamphetamine, for the love of God, if ever there was a time as you as a parent to advocate for your kid, that would be it. That would be it. All right? We can't just look at doctors as omnipotent beings who can't do anything wrong. Obviously, that isn't true, which is why medical malpractice lawsuits exist. You are your kid's front line. If there are heart issues or any other underlying issues such as epilepsy, this is something the doctor needs to know. All right? Just saying. Non-stimulants with FDA approval for ADHD include atomic teen and alpha agonists. Adverse reactions to non-stimulant medications include tiredness, insomnia, stomach aches, headaches, and nausea. Hepatitis and suicidal thoughts can also occur. I never in my goddamn life, and I've had those doctors that threw pills at me and did nothing else, suffered from hepatitis from a pill at any point in time. That is an extremely low percentile. Way lower in fact, than the JRC threshold. And I would still take all of it, all of it, before I would consider the GED device. Okay? At least the medicine does something to assist with the underlying issues that may be causing and triggering the behavior. That GED device teaches me nothing. Okay? Nothing. But but you act better now. It's called masking, Karen. It is why I look exhausted all the time. All right? It's not long term. It never lasts forever. And at some point in time, 
it's going to slip and crashing and burning after all that masking isn't fun, kids. Thus, these drugs are not without risks, although in approving them, the FDA determined that their risks are outweighed by the benefits in treating ADHD. So, risks and benefits, it all comes back to that, doesn't it? We can say definitively that the drugs that are out there to treat those with ADHD tend to not send kids to the ERs. They tend to not produce second to third degree burns. They tend to not wake people up in the middle of the night to shock them either. Okay? The risk and benefits comparison, the fact that this is even being used as an argument from the DRC is utterly ridiculous. Because the drugs that they do prescribe have gone through way more scrutiny than the GED device ever has. Also, when doctors prescribe you a new medicine, when they're used to the give and take, it is their job as a doctor to then tell you and list the side effects. And you can't just swallow it, parents, and tune it out. You gotta listen to what they're saying. Medicine is give and take. Pills are give and take. If you don't tell your doctor what's wrong, he doesn't know how to fix it, all right? We're going to go ahead and close on that one, folks. We don't get very many views on this channel. The few we do get do tend to get removed from time to time. You know the drill, folks. Please don't forget to hit the like button, hit subscribe, and please, folks, don't forget to hit those comments. I appreciate your time tonight. And as always, folks, we here at Spilling Tea hope you have a good one. I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye, everyone.